Hey, what's up, YouTube? I was just watching a Corey C video where he uh, he was kind of archiving uh, something by a guy named Pontifex. Spot on commentary from Pontifex. And I, I agree with a lot with what he was saying, but um, there's something that, that troubles me a lot about this whole discussion of awake and aware. Um, many people throughout history have claimed to be awake and aware. And at the times, they thought that what they were doing was the, the best for society at large and the community at large and all that. Um, and in all those situations, that came to an end and was taken over by something else and changed and, and so on and so forth. I'm, I'm not finished with a, a book, but uh, I want to talk about it briefly. It's, it's called The True Believer, and I think everybody should really go read it. Start now and read it. Because I think what we think, well, I think that many that's involved with this community and particularly like a libertarian mindset has this concept of awake and aware. And it's almost, it's almost like an elitist ideal in, in their head that they're, they're more conscious of what's going on. Everyone around them is sheeple. Everybody around them doesn't have their act together. And by and large, the people around them that they regard as sheeple look at them as crazies. So who's right? Who's true? Who's accurate? What's the, what's the, the actual thing? Um, well, on one hand, there's a whole lot of people that are involved with the system as it is right now. That's making millions and, and billions of dollars. And they're putting people to work every day. They're working with a system that they may not 100% agree with. And maybe making small moves on the dial. Making small changes in how they deal with people. How they move things. How they change things. Right? Working with a system that exists. What I find is, is when I hear a lot of these videos that, that have a very strong libertarian message, it's a lot of this wake up stupid or I'm more awake than you are or I understand liberty and, and the pursuit of happiness better than you do. And that may be true. Maybe you can conceptualize it better than me because I think there's a lot of people out there that understand it a lot more uh, in depth at a visceral level, almost logistically than I do. Shall not be infringed is an example of, of one such person, I think. When, when he talks, uh, you understand what he's saying as though he, he is almost living that way now, regardless of the shackles and bonds around him from the society he lives in. So, on one hand, I, I know exactly what he's saying. I don't feel it the way he does, but I understand what he's saying. And maybe I'm getting closer and closer to that point. But at the same time, I've also got my foot, well, maybe a couple toes, still in the system that exists. Because it still exists, and you got to work with it at some point. Am I a pussy because of that? Well, the fact that that's even a comment to a lot of people that are maybe not as deep down the libertarian rabbit hole as other people is part of the problem, you know, when it comes to a lot of this stuff. Um, there's something that I think I have to point out, because I think sometimes we forget, and, and don't come back and say, oh, I know that, that's obvious. Well, there's a lot of people who don't know that, I think. That if you were to clap your hands and you were to go and, and get your every libertarian dream magically provided to you, you would have over half of the population in this country not worth a pile of shit. They wouldn't be able to take responsibility for their own lives. They wouldn't be able to do anything. And so some of you would be like, so what? F them. In fact, I'll put a bullet in their head. Or, when those 50% of the people, some of them get together and say they need, you know, to start clamping down on things and control them, and, and people like shall not be infringed, holding the gun, put a bullet in the, the ringleader's head. Uh, I'm not saying that's good or bad, and, and look, freedom is always good, freedom is always great, but freedom comes, you know, great responsibility, and most people aren't up to that game right now. They're just not there. So what does that mean? If, if half the people in this country really aren't, or, or more, whatever, I'm just throwing half out. Call it whatever you want. Even if it's 25%, that's a big pain in the ass to deal with. So what do you do? Get the banks out. 
Get rid of the banks. Go on. Get rid of the banks. Go back on the gold standard. Is it really going to do anything? Sure, it's going to do something. But there's always going to be some moron that's going to drag other people down with him because he does a stupid thing. He makes a stupid choice. So you say, all right, we'll cut out all welfare. Cut out all... Everything that the government does that's a handout to the lower common denominator. Well, then you're going to have to, again... <laughs> you're going to have to sell... 50% of the people on this mentality. How do you make it go away? I'm going back to my, like, reset button. Are you waiting for the reset button to get pushed? Because guess what? That's pretty much the only way you're going to be able to rewrite the whole thing. How else are you going to do it? So you're awake and aware. You're, you're, you're conscious of what's going on. You, you have an understanding of how messed up things are. And you believe that you're being controlled. Oh, by, by and large, I don't think we're being controlled. I don't think, well, okay. The deck may be stacked against a lot of people. But I don't think it's because there's some dark, unseen hand. I don't think it's because there's bankers. I don't think it's because that they've got some, some world order, new world order kind of mentality that's going to creep in there and change the way things work. I think most of it, it's people being people. People looking out for themselves first and foremost. It's almost like objectivism in itself, right? I don't think that the president is a puppet. I never have. George Bush wasn't a puppet. Obama's not a puppet. They may be immensely stupid, but guess what? Half or more than half of the people in this country is immensely stupid. And you only got to get 51% to be president. Or, uh, I take that back. You only have to get the most electoral votes to, to be president. So what, what does that mean? What do you do? Are you going to cause an enlightenment that's going to smarten up 51% of the people? No. And those 51% of the people are going to get wrapped up in some kind of mass movement because it appeals to the one of many different things that causes a person to fall into a mass movement. Again... Go read The True Believer. Start reading it now, and from page one, you're going to get something out of it. I promise you that. I, I almost say stop watching this video and go to Amazon and buy the damn book, because it is, it is that good. It is that good. Um, and the, the writer of it, I believe, was a janitor, uh, CEO of Unicom. Correct me if I'm wrong. He was a janitor, and oh, hold on. I've got to drink some scotch tonight. He was a janitor, and he's oh, he's just been lambasted by so many of the intelligentsias and the liberals and, and whatever. Look, go read it. It, it. Once you start understanding, the truth of the matter is, is that we're not special. This is not unique. Just because I have a camera doesn't make what we're going through any different than the multitude of things that have come in the past. Whether it's a socialist type system, or a conservative system, or a capitalist system, whatever you want to call it. The, the motivation behind the minds of men has remained the same throughout the years. It has been the same. It's just dolled up in a different dress every time. But the people buy in hook, line, and sinker because they have some really, really base level needs that aren't getting hit. Is it intelligence? Yeah, but what are you going to do? Are you going to make people smarter? Then what? You got a bunch of smart people running around not wanting to pick up trash. I'm, I'm rambling, but awake and aware, it's great. But, but it's, it's almost condescending when you start talking like that. Because then you're looking down at people. You're like, oh yeah, I'm climbing the ladder. I'm on step one of the ladder. I'm five steps up. I mean, what is this? Is this Scientology? I'm going to hold on to my little things, check out for my thetans? No, it doesn't matter how smart you are. It doesn't matter that you are the enlightened one and you're looking down upon the masses. If you can't take your enlightened abilities and help bring everybody up with the understanding that you're not going to make people smarter, you're not. You're not going to make them better people. People are going to be people. The percentages of people, this bell curve of intelligence that we have in this world is going to remain the same regardless of how much technology we get. Regardless of how much school you throw in their face. Regardless of how many subsidies you get. It's a bell curve that will remain forever. 
until we evolve as a species out of this whatever we're in, it will not change. One iota. So what are you going to do? How are you going to bring the smart people, how are you going to open the eyes of the people who can be opened, as well as bringing along the people who can't have their eyes open? How? It's easy, as, it's easy for us to point to the Articles of Confederation and say, God, things were good back then. You had an almost homogeneous like base of people that had similar motives. They were outcasts. They were people that, that fled from a country that was persecuting them. Go back to my video about this, the life cycle of a nation. They had faith. It doesn't necessarily have to be faith in religion, but most of it was faith in a religion, an outcast religion. So they knew they had to band together. That, and, and, and uh, I'm going to get the comment, oh, well, you know, so-and-so was a deist, Thomas Jefferson, not Jefferson, uh, Benjamin Franklin was, was from a Protestant family, but he was not really religious. Yes, but he was like one generation away from a very uh, Judeo-Christian value base. And he favored that of the, the laws, well, not the laws, but the values of a Judeo-Christian system as well as that of an entrepreneur and a capitalist. Okay, so tell me. Give me, give me, this, give me this scheme, the, the, the awakened, aware people. Give me a scheme. And I'm not, I'm not... Congratulations on you becoming awake and aware. Good work. Good work. But don't play that game of like, I'm more aware than you are or I'm more awake than you are. You have no concept of most of the other people in this country and what they're doing or how awake they are. Or if they're not, you know, 78% libertarian and, you know, the other percent of them is bullshit. Well, that's not true either. They might be working in systems that you guys have no idea or working with things that you have no concept of. Are they, do they, are they the most liberal or not liberal, um, free people thinking the most about freedom and, and liberty? Do they think about it more than you? Are they better at thinking about it than you? Well, great. Do something with it. I'd rather have somebody that was 50% libertarian and make positive change towards a direction that made some impactful truth towards that direction than talk to somebody that's 99% libertarian and says, oh, look at me. I'm so awake and aware. I'm good. and I'm more libertarian than you. All right. Cool. 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 So, all right. Then what? Well, just leave me alone. That's what I want. Okay, great. See ya. What do I do about this mob of morons? How do I, how do I get them to leave you alone? Because we're cool. We're cool. I've got this camera. We, we say similar things. We're cool. What do I do with these guys? Because I saw, you know, you got a lot of bullets, but there's a lot of morons. You gonna shoot them all? Seems kind of a problem. Anyway, I'm not more awake or aware than any of you. You're all, in your own little way, awake in something that I don't understand. But, uh, again, we gotta, we gotta get there together. Gotta move it together. If you don't want to make a choice, you just... <laughs> Stupid. I'm, I'm trying to quote Rush lyrics right now. Yeah, uh, people are still going to be there. They're still going to be morons. And if you don't move them along with you in some way, whether it be under a thumb or a hand up or get the hell off my property, I mean, you're still going to have to deal with it. And that get the hell off my property is only going to work for so long until they got too many morons and you have guns and bullets and people and so on and so forth. So cheers. It's a Saturday night, and uh, I... I'd like to know what people think about this. Go get True Believer. Go get it. Read it. I want to talk more about that book. Lamb Dog, I'm talking to you. Uh, anybody else? Haas, I think Haas would like it too. Um, everybody, just go, just go get it. If you've if you've read it and read part of it or reading part of it, make a video about it. I want to know what everybody thinks about it because there's a lot of stuff coming up. Because it's human nature. It's going to come up. And the more we know about the past, the more we're ready to deal with it. All right, guys. Take it easy. Bye.